Okay. Okay. So I'm good now. Okay. So we should be all running. Um, I apologize again. I think that the, the feed might be a little buffery um, today because of the fact that I am actually not in my normal office. Uh, so I don't quite have super high bandwidth. Um, so we are trying to we're trying to do this uh, from a remote location. Um, I'm actually in Atlanta, Georgia right now. Um, but let's go ahead and go on with it. And if anyone has any comments or questions, there is a chat. Um, but uh, so you should be able to post any questions there. I'll also be checking email and I'll be checking the tweets as well to see if anything's going on there. If it's unwatchable, let me know, and I'll try and take it down and try something else. I, the only thing I can think of is to try and figure out how to log back in and get a, a faster um, a bandwidth connection, but I'm not sure if I'll be able to do that. Um, anyways, I just want to make a couple of quick announcements. So um, Unit 4 went on for two weeks. Um, you know, it was partially because I was doing some travel, but also partially because it's a much longer unit than the other units. Uh, there's a lot more context. I'm going to be posting the last kind of wrap-up unit today, uh, which will actually hopefully also, if I can get it all edited down, contain a surprise guest video as well. Uh, I think that'll be really nice. Um, and then we're going to be kind of going forward doing one unit per week. So this week will be unit five. I've already got the first videos of that done, so they'll be posted shortly. In fact, I think 5.1 might be up today along with uh, the wrap-up of unit four. Um, well, then you'll then be seeing them come out on a pretty regular basis. Um, just as a comment, again, uh, YouTube Hangouts um, on air, right? Part of the reason why you're seeing it in this different format it seems to no longer be in existence. Uh, we're working on trying to get it uh, up and running again, uh, or we're trying to work on using live streaming to do it. And I think this will work fine once we switch. I've tested it, and it's kind of funny. I tested it and worked fine. But I was on uh, my home network, and right now I'm running on the um, a, um, a, a a network uh, in an office in a, in a hotel room. And so I think part of it is just that the um, I don't have quite as fast of a network connection as I do at home. So hopefully that'll disappear. This will be the last trip I'm taking while I am teaching this class. So hopefully it will be the last time we have to deal with this issue. Um, so. Other things going on. So there was a couple of questions um, in the uh, um, uh, in the forums and things about um, one of the download videos being incorrect. Um, I hopefully have fixed that. Um, I apologize for that. Just you know, you got like so many URLs copying and pasting. It's occasionally the case that you're going to get one of them in the wrong place. So I'm sorry about that. But hopefully, uh, they should all be correct now. Um, everything through unit uh, 4.5, right, subunit 4.5 uh, should be up and looking good. Subunit 4.6 will be posted today and 5.1 hopefully today as well. Uh, and the rest of 5 should be posted by the end of this week. Um, so you'll be able to catch all that. Um, I do have a question. Um, a couple of people have asked about the fact that sometimes the videos that, sorry, sorry, sometimes the models that they're running don't look exactly like either the results that I'm getting or the results in the textbook, even though they set things to exactly the right same values. Uh, one of the comments I wanted to make was that, um, you know, and we talk about this a little bit, actually, very appropriately in subunit 4.5, but, um, the truth of the matter is, is that agent-based models are stochastic, and what that means is that occasionally the um, the random number draws are going to be slightly different. Um, so they should look roughly the same, you know, a lot of times, um, because a lot of times the models are built to do that. But sometimes they're going to be very different. So, um, for instance, if you played around with the wolf sheep model, which is also the example in the book and one that Uri talked about uh, in his in original introduction and overview, in the wolf sheep model. Um, you, some of the parameter settings can create stable patterns, and some of them cause the wolf to die, wolves to die out. Some of them cause the sheep to die out, right? Um, but in the end, right, some of those parameter settings are 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 dependent also on the random number draws. So this is why it's very important whenever you're running a model, an agent-based model that has stochastic elements, to do multiple runs of the same model, and that way you can kind of average over those results to get a more realistic overall result of what's going on, okay? 
Um, so that came up a couple of times. Um, another kind of quick follow-up to last week, we had done some demos of uh, the um, of Tony had a couple of questions about um, tracking whether or not people were at home or at the office. And in the, I built him kind of a little model, and we did that kind of live last time. And when we did that, right, um, they, um, the, um, the way we did that, we did it for um, um, a particular, like, it, we assumed that everyone was going to the same home or the same work. And Tony wrote me back and asked a very important question, which was um, how to actually, um, um, oops, didn't mean to pop that up quite yet, but how to actually, um, uh, how to actually keep track of people at a particular home or a particular location. And, you know, I, I think I'll actually, this is a good time as any, I'm going to try and use the cool um, window feature displays in this new YouTube Live to bring that up. And that was what I was just pointing to, but I didn't quite mean to do it quite yet. I didn't realize it would show up immediately. Oh, there's a little checkbox that would have made it invisible. Let's try that. Okay, so um, so this isn't the model I want to show you yet, um, but um, it is a model that we're going that I'll be that I, I will bring it up shortly. Okay, so there you should be seeing Net Logo at this point, right? Um, and I'll make it bigger. All right. Okay. So let's bring up the one from last time. Right. Um, I just kind of want to quickly go through this because I think it's an interesting example. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Google try. Okay. So, um, no, not that one. Okay. Trying to find the model. I thought I had a pig, but apparently I, I misplaced it. Um, okay. So file open. I know this is riveting television, but give me one split second. File. Okay. Here we go. Got it. Now. I did have it. I just wasn't looking close enough. So if you remember last time, this is the model where, um, let me make it a little bit bigger on your screen, right? This is the model where I can actually pull this off the laptop camera for a second. This is the model that um, where we were trying to track people going to and from home. And Tony mentioned, you know, well, what if I want to, so in the current setup, you know, the, the model doesn't actually really show anything. Um, they're kind of going to and from home, and home isn't actually a physical location, right? Well, what if I wanted to give them a physical location so um, that was specific, so their home or their workplace, right? So I could actually give turtles two more properties of home and work, right? And um, these, and home actually is a reserved word in NetLogo, so we have to call it my home um, and my work. And these could be specific patches, right, um, in in the world. And so we could do, like, set my home to um, one of patches, right, and set my work to one of patches, right? And now, um, and so, and we could make this a smaller subset. I'm doing it for all of patches, but you could have, like, five locations that are, home patches and five locations that are work patches, and then you would just do one of those, right? And then, so now when we do the go to home, we're gonna set the location home, and we're gonna set, um, we're going to, we can use the move to command to my home, right? And this will cause them to move to that location, and we can do the same for a move to the fish to my work, right? So, once we've done this, now they're going to specific home and work locations, and you can see them. And they kind of move so fast that it kind of just flickers. If I slow it down, you'll see one of them actually, the individual ones moving to and from, right? Um, now, if, um, let me stop that. 
oh, I have the speed slider down. Um, so now, you know, maybe I want to count people in a particular location, right? Um, so what we could do is we could find one of these, patch negative five, six, right? And we could add a monitor that did, actually, you know what I'm going to do before I do this? I'm going to make the world smaller so that there's fewer at home and patch locations. So I'm going to, right now it's 33 by 33. I'm going to move it down to like 9 by 9, right? 7 by 7. Let's see, 9 by 9, so it's 5. No, 4. Eh, that's right, 4 times 2 plus 1 because there's a 0 location too, right? Um, and I'll make the patch size a lot bigger, right? And so this. Now you'll see there, there's actually a lot fewer locations they're going to and from, right? So let's say I wanted to find out how many turtles were at this particular location, right, at any particular time. Well, that's patch negative three, four, right? So I can build a monitor that says um, um, ask patch negative three, four, count turtles here, right? Um, and we can just say turtles at negative three, four, right? Uh, oh, I did something wrong there. Oh, yeah, I can't actually do an ask patch in here. That's right. So, because it wants a reporter. Um, and if you just do count turtles here, it's going to give you a bug, right? So I actually have to build a, a special um, um, a reporter or... The other way I could do it um, was we could use the reporter that's built in uh, to the the patch calls, right? Okay. So you can't do an ask in a, in a um, as a reporter because an ask doesn't return any value, right? Instead, I have to do um, a reporter count as a reporter, right? But I want to do a count of what? I want to count the turtles here, which is a property of patch negative three, four. Now, it's not actually a property. It's a reporter call on that patch, right? Um, so that's going to work. Um, and so now, you know, I can get a count of the number of turtles at that particular location at any particular time, right? Um, and it seems like it's two all the time, which is kind of interesting, um, no matter what. Um, so... Um, that's just a quick example of follow-up. I just felt like it was a cool little follow-up to last time, right? You, whenever you're doing these kind of things where you have a agent um, and you want to kind of keep track of their location, this has come up in a couple of places, right? One of the best things is to assign them particular locations they're moving to or from, right? Um, so thanks again, Tony, for that question. It was great. I've just saved that off. Um, so we can have that. Let me turn off the window capture and turn back on my cam. So that was one of the things I wanted to talk about this week. Okay. Um, so let's see. Um, other things to talk about. So um, Martha Castellano actually wrote in with a series of questions. Let me pull them up. About a model she's interested in building uh, that deals with um, trying to understand how um, uh, how to model uh, students moving through a, a classroom environment, right? Okay. So let me pull up the exact questions, right, um, that Martha had. There it is. Okay. So Martha specifically wrote and asked, you know, who... So her project is this. I have a student enrolled in university degree, in a university degree, and the students take six subjects each semester. Now they have a, a column that indicates the level of the semester and the subjects that they have to take in that semester. And the simulation um, should um, have the student courses take subject by subject, and then they have to take a, the subject well enough that they get approved, they get a green um, grade. Otherwise, they get a yellow right, um, a grade, in which case they have to retake, and if they fail a second time, they get an orange, and the third time, they fail out of the university. Um, and so she wants to kind of map how they get through this and how they progress, right, so that for each of the students, they, they have it set up. So her question is, 
the is the best to set up the curriculum um, as an agent, as a patch, um, or as a network, and how to build up this curriculum, right? Um, and she has a great little picture. Let me see. Can I share that quickly? I probably can. Right? Add a new window capture. Right. So let's see. Google Hangouts. Here we go. Okay. So she has a cool little picture, right? Um, oh, it's not actually. It's visible, but it's really small. I don't know if I. Oh, I can't make that big. That's nice. Okay, good. Learning new stuff about YouTube Live as we go here. Um, so. Um, you know, so this is, in, in this case, you know, she has this little picture that shows the students and how much progress they're making through the different courses. And these are the courses, these are the students, um, and looking at what's going on, right? So this is a cool little, this is a cool little idea, that's for sure. Um, and so we can kind of explore that one a little bit. Um, so let me bring back up NetLogo, right? Um, okay. Um, find that window actually. Okay, there we go. So in some ways, it might not seem like it, but in some ways this is similar to the um, the same idea for the um, for Tony's problem about going to and from work because you're essentially building up this kind of like schedule that students have to progress through, right? Um, it's a little bit tricky. Um, this one's a little more difficult because you have this, they have to make the certain levels and things like that. I mean, you could do this as like a set of agents. I don't think that's a horrible idea. I think my initial instinct would be to do it as a, um, as a list, right? So I would do Turtles own um, my schedule, right? Which would be their personal progress through the program. I'd probably also create a global, which is the, you know, if you want to call it the curriculum or whatever, right, where it's actually the, the setup that they have to go, right? And then, you know, you could do a two setup. You can always write the two go, two setup, right, right off the bat. Um, do the simple, I always write clear all and reset ticks. And I almost always also put in my tick down here at the bottom, right? So let's assume that a tick is like a semester in this particular case, right? Then the first thing um, we might have is, you know, um, set curriculum, and you could have it be like math, biology, physics, right? Um, and the idea is being that they have to progress through each one of these individually, right? Um, and the schedule... So let's create 100 turtles, right? And the set schedule might initially be that they've not completed anything or, you know, and one interesting way to do it um, would be, actually, sorry, I did this incorrectly. I want to do this as a list, right? Um, so it's a list, it's the list math, biology, physics, right? Um, I could do it. Nothing in different ways. Oh, math has not been defined. Right. So, math, biology. Right. Okay. Um, so, I, I could just kind of have the schedule be set up to be the curriculum at first, right? So then they just have that list initially. And then... Um, I could have them um, then choose, keep track of their grades, right? Um, and initially have their grades be a list of, say, zero, 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 right? Um, or, you know, something to indicate that they're not, they haven't even tried the class yet. Maybe negative one, negative one, negative one, right? So, I'll put a comment to myself because that's something that might not be totally obvious, right? Negative one indicates that the student hasn't taken a course yet, right? And so then, pull this up, move this around a little bit, right? So then, um, sorry, I'm trying to make sure I get this all in the view as much as possible. 
Okay. So hopefully you can still see all that, right? Let me hit check again. Let me make this, I'm going to make this window a little smaller so it fits better. Okay. There we go. Okay. So, um, so now we might want to have them actually take some of the classes, right? And then get grades, right? And so what we'll do is we'll just say, we'll actually right off the bat, you know, say something like, um, uh, let's say plus one indicates that they pass the class, right? And um, we'll just do like negative two indicates that they failed the class once, right? And negative three indicates that they failed the class twice, right? And so then um, at that point, so I think she said that um, fail the second time, right? And so then if they fail a fourth time, um, we probably don't even need this indication status, right? They failed the class three times. Yeah. And the reason why I'm setting this up with like negative one and positive one is just because this way, it's kind of a nice way if you wanted to later add grades, you could do plus one, plus two, plus three, plus four, et cetera, right? Um, and go on. And of course, you could also do letters as well. I'm just going to use numbers, right, for now because uh, they're easier to do comparisons on a lot of times, right? So then... Um, you could have, you could imagine a set where the first thing the agents do is they choose a class, right? So each student chooses a class, right? So they could ask turtles set class one of my schedule, right? Um, and we need to give them the class. So this will be the current class that they're taking, right? As a property. Right. And then they can, um, after that, they have to um, try and pass the class, right? So, um, S turtles if random 10 is less than is greater than 5 all right then we'll say they passed and we'll let's you know let grade be 0 set grade 1 we'll do this as an if else right actually we can just do this right because if their grade is 0 then um, grade zero equals they failed, right? Grade one equals passed, right? So um, in this case, if they've passed, we now can add that to their 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 grades, right? So um, so we'll say so we have to update the grade now in the schedule. Um, and this is going to get a little tricky, right? Uh, but we'll say set grades item uh, member class my schedule hmm. how to do this, how to do this, it's a little tricky, right? Um, Huh, this actually does get a little tricky real quick here. Let's think about this a little bit more. Um, so it might be, you know, let's do this. Let's try and redo this. This is one of the things where, you know, I like experimenting. Let's try and redo this as a, a set of agents, right? Um, instead of a, um, a, a list, right? Um, so what we could do if we wanted to do that, was we could, I'm not sure. Sorry, this one is, this one's, uh, I hadn't, uh, I, had, I had thought this through, I thought, but um, it's having a little bit of trouble. So 
this isn't quite going to work because what we need to do is we need to actually change the individual element of the list. And we can do that. It just becomes a little tricky. So let's let's go ahead and do it, right? Let's continue on the way we're doing it, right? So, um, so we need to figure out which class um, in the grades we need, we're updating, right? So we need to find out the index value of the class in the overall schedule. Um, and so member um, isn't quite what we want because that's just going to return whether or not that's a member. What we want to do is find out what item it is. So let's look up help, uh, item, help in our, in, our, in our thing. Hold on. Help. No, no. We want to do it this way. Help. Look up in dictionary. Okay. So I'm going to bring up a, another web monitor real quick. Hopefully. If it comes up. I'm trying to work on it. Um, did it come up someplace and I missed it? Okay. Trying to get it to show up. Um, why is that not coming up? Hold on one second. Oh, the help thing appears way down there. Okay, hold on one second. I think I got it. Ah, I see what happened. Okay, it, it did this little thing. Apparently, I wasn't right on the, the help command, and so I, it showed up in a weird location. So here we go. Let's now add in the window. Okay, for that particular one. Uh, okay, so now we got the user manual. Okay, so um, now we're looking at the user manual, and I want to look at the list commands, right? And the list commands, um, basically one way to do it is you can um, do, um, what we want to look at is we want to look at the replace item command. So replace item takes the index in a list and changes it to a particular value. So in this case, we want to replace you know, whatever course we're taking with the new grade that we received in that course, right? Uh, but first, we need to check to see what our grade was before um, we take we we did this, right? So let's let's go grab that first, right? Um, so okay, so let's hide this one for a second. Okay, so we need to get the item number of that. So item is actually the command that does that. It'll tell you which item the class is. So we're going to get the item in the class in the schedule. So this is the index, right, into the item class in the schedule. And now um, we can say, let's double check. Always interesting to check your code as you're doing it, right? So I think I've got this working. Print index, right? Check that out. Okay, yeah, so item expect the input to be a number, but got, yeah, yeah, because item actually tells you the item in there. So what we want instead is we want to find the item that has that member to it, right? So that's a different command. That's not item. Item is the one that actually returns the one that matches that value, right? So the command we want for that, um, and there is a command to do that, is, yeah is position, right? So position will actually tell you what the position of that command, of that item is in the list. All right, so set up, go, right? And we get a bunch of them and they're obviously a bunch of different values for it. Okay, good. So we've got the index of the particular class in the grade and now we need to get the value um, that passed grade be um, the item of index and grades, right? So this is going to tell us what the pass grade was, right? So now we can determine how to update the grade based upon whether we passed or failed the current grade, 
right? The current schedule, all right? So what we can do is we can say, if grade, which is our local grade, right, for that we just got this semester, is greater than or equal to one, right, then it doesn't matter what our past grade was. So we're gonna set, um, we're gonna replace item index um, in grades, um, and just double checking, um, place item index list value, right? We're gonna replace it with a one, indicating that we've now passed the class, right? Um, if, uh, and we'll probably, we'll do an else, right? Because if the grade was a fail grade, right? Then we need to see what the previous grade was. So if pass grade is um, less than negative three, or is is um, less than negative two, right? Now we know this is our third time failing the class, so um, we might want to ask the turtle to just die because they failed out of the class, right? If it's greater than that, right, then we're simply going to replace the item in the grades with whatever the past grade was minus one, right? So in other words, we're just gonna subtract off another one from the grade, right? Um, and hopefully, so this is, gets a little tricky, right? Um, but hopefully uh, you can kind of ex explain, I can kind of go back through this now that we have it up and running. Um, oh, so replace item returns the list after you've replaced it. So to actually update the list, you actually have to do set grades replace item. Right? And this will set it to the new one. Right? Okay. So hopefully, let's add our little buttons in, set up, got that. And we got a button for go, right? Now, there's a couple of things I haven't done here, um, right? Um, and in fact, you see all the turtles died because apparently they all failed <laughs> at some point. Um, what I haven't done is check to see if they've passed all the classes, right? So you'd have to add in a check to see if they've passed all the classes. Let's see if it even works a little bit, though. Hit set up, hit go once, right? We'll inspect one of the turtles, right? And you're not going to be able to see this. But yeah, you know, they're eventually they are passing some of the classes and things like this, right? Um, you're going to need to add a check to see, um, so right here where they're choosing their class, right, you should make sure it's a class that they haven't already passed, right? Um, so you could, you could um, do that by, by removing, for instance, um, yeah, so that'd be a good way to do it. This would be an easy way to do it. So you can just remove um, classes from their schedule once they have passed them. Right, um, so let's go back up. Let's do that real quick, and maybe a good place to stop for the day. So um, remove item, or um, we'll take um, an index and a list, and just remove that item from your list. Right. So we could go into here and say once we've gotten the grade and we've passed it. Right, um, we can remove the item, and we actually have to remove it from both the grades and uh, the curriculum once we pass it. So actually, we don't even have to do the set grades because once we pass it, it's done. But we're going to remove the item from the grades, right? And we're going to remove the item from my schedule, right? And this essentially says, I passed it. I'm done. Um, we don't have to look at it anymore, right? And this is kind of an arbitrary, this is an additional optional piece, you know, that maybe you want to, if you want to keep track of actual grades, you'd have to think about how to handle that a little bit more intelligently, right? But then, you know, so, um, oh, so then you get into problems where, oh, so that they, Position class in my schedule. So if I look at for both, it should only be in there once.
Does it return? At least returns a copy of this. Okay. Yeah. Um. So it should already be removing it. Okay. The index is the index of the position in the schedule. Huh. Once we've done that, we should be removing it. Set class one of my schedule. Huh. Should work. Why? Let me check that again. Set up. Go. Go. Hmm. Let's pass. Actually, I'm going to do this. It's obviously, some little bug in my code somewhere. So, go again. Okay. For some reason. So, I'm trying to maintain the grades list and the schedule list at the same time so that they're roughly equal. Uh, but for some reason, I'm not having that happen. Um, so the because so the index should never be whatever the class should be should never be greater than the schedule. Um, item let pass grade be item index into grades and it's causing me a problem because. I can't find item two. Why is it not? Why? So I passed the class. Once I passed the class, it should be in there. Um, it should have removed it from both the index and the grades, right? Um, well, let's see. So, okay. And now it's getting a pass grade of biology. Oh, oh, remove item. No, index. Index is based upon the same index. Oh, here's the problem. Typing too fast. I set the grades equal to the remove item for the other one. I apologize for that. It should now work my schedule. That's why I was getting this biology in the other one and things like that, right? So now, yeah, it's working, right? So now we should, yeah, eventually we're going to get to a case that they're going to have no, no schedules. Um, uh, so you can basically check that. You can say with length my schedule greater than zero, right? And we could put this code down in here because these are this code only applies to people who haven't done it, right? So now I can do set up, go. It's going to run for a while. And then eventually you're going to get to the point where everyone left has passed, right? Um, so we can count the turtles, and that'll tell us how many have passed. And out of the 10 that started, six passed. Okay, so that was a little bit of a complicated piece of code, uh, but I think it's a great example of how you can use lists to keep track of things uh, that might be like matrices or arrays, right? Um, and kind of keep track of what's going on and, and happening. Now, list manipulation is not easy. In fact, I made several mistakes during this uh, kind of quick demo. Uh, but at least it gives you an idea of what's going on. And I'll send this code on to you, Martha, so that you have it. Um, and so you can take a look at it later on. So let me just save it off. Um, scheduling students. Got it. And we're good. Okay. Um, let me turn off these two and go back to that. So that answers Martha's questions. Um, I, I did have a couple of other quick announcements that I want to talk about. And unfortunately, I'm not going to. I had a, another model that someone had wanted. Kalani was looking at Smellscapes. And I was going to take a little bit of a look at that. But I'm not going to be able to get to that this week, Kalani. I apologize. I'll take a look at it next week. I'll move it on to my notes to be the highest priority for week eight. Um, I think because of the um, the startup of the streaming problem and and the and the Martha's code took a little longer than I thought it was going to, just didn't get around to it. But I will definitely put it on my list of things to work on uh, to have us discuss next week. Um, so um, 
couple of quick announcements to recap uh, based upon what happened at the beginning. And um, also, uh, you know, just some administrative announcements. Um, there were, um, obviously we have moved to YouTube Hangouts Live. Hopefully it'll be better in the future as I go back to my own network and don't have to rely on a, um, a hotel network. Um, unit 4 uh, will be completed today. Unit 5 will be completed this week, which will put us roughly back on schedule again. Um, also, there will be the first peer eval uh, assignment will be coming up today, so take a look for that. Um, we will now forever be looking on YouTube Hangouts Live, so I'll be posting the URL to that. It'll basically just be my live stream every time, so you can just look for it there. Uh, but the, so the URL won't change. That's one nice aspect of going to Hangouts Live. Um, and then two other small comments that came up in the notes. Uh, one of the video URLs was broken. And then someone pointed out, actually, I made a mistake in uh, the uh, uh, clear all plots command in the reset diffusion in our code. There is, of course, no reason why that should be inside an ask turtles. That's actually going to make the code a lot more complicated. So in case you're interested, when you're um, looking, I'll, I'll show you real quick. Um, let me turn back on the NetLogo window, not that one, this one, right? Um, when you are um, in the, the model that we built, the diffusion model, this reset diffusion command, if you go over to the procedure, right, originally, I put clear all pots inside the Ash Turtles. That was me just, you know, kind of trying to go for my notes and typing quickly, but that shouldn't actually be there because that's going to actually cause all of the turtles to clear all plots. It should really be down here instead. Um, and so thank you very much uh, for pointing that out uh, to me uh, because of the fact that that was, that was definitely a, a bug with uh, the code. So... I, I got to think, um, I don't know your actual name, but Af Broman uh, for, is the handle you're using on there. So thank you very much for pointing that out. It should be here. This is much more uh, computationally efficient. In our case, it doesn't matter terribly much because the code's not too complicated. Uh, but, you know, it's always good to be as computationally efficient as possible, right? Um, I will definitely correct that in the model in the videos for future um, runs of this class. Finally, um, some people have asked about URI slides, and I did want to mention that, um, oh, turn those off, turn those off. I did want to mention that um, I've gotten them from URI, um, and I will be putting them up as part of this week's uh, lecture. Um, of course, the way Complexity Explorer works, it's not going to show you. I'm going to put them back on part of, on URI's video, so it won't automatically highlight that for you. It won't say there's new content there. So if you want to grab or a slides, you have to go back to his video, and I'll put them in the comments down below. Okay, that's all I got time for today. I got to get going to another meeting at this point. Uh, but I hope this has worked in the end. It took a while, and I apologize for that to get started. It turns out I the event scheduling thing doesn't seem to be working, so I'm just going to use the standard uh, live setup uh, going forward. Uh, so you should see it from there. Okay, thanks, everybody.